When Saturday Night Live first debuted, what was it, almost seven years ago now, something like that? And the cast started working, there's some marvelous talent in that uh, original. Uh, not that the kids there nowadays are not good, but the original cast was wonderful. And every time I would tune it in and see Gilda Radner, <laughs> she put me on the floor. Uh, she's been very busy. She's uh, with writer Alan Zweibel. She's written a hilarious book based on one of the more popular characters on the show. It's called Roseanne, Rosanna Dana's Hey, Get Back the Workbook. <laughs> <laughs> Would you welcome Gilda Radner? <laughs> I gotta tell you, you have made me laugh so many times, I cannot tell you. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Same goes here. Yeah, thank you. You were doing a thing one night when you, it had to do with Dr. Joyce Brothers. You'd been in the steam room with Dr. Joyce Brothers. Right, right. And you started to describe how terrible it was. And I laughed so hard, I almost did things that a grown man does not do. Oh. <laughs> you are really funny. Oh, thank you. I, I owe a lot to the writers on the show, like Alan Zweibel, Had for sure. Did I say Zweibel or Zweibel, isn't it? I'm sorry. Yeah, Zweibel. It means yeah. onion in German. I didn't know it that. It does. <laughs> Alan Onion, that's kind of a nice yes, name. Yes, <laughs> he goes by that sometimes. You know, after all the years you, sp <laughs> after all the years you spent on the, uh, the Saturday night, this is the first time you've ever been with us. I know. I've always been too nervous oh, to come, come on. on. No, that's the absolute truth. I really? mean, why? today was the most nervous day. I felt like I had a New Year's date, you know? I started shopping for clothes. I probably have the wrong thing on, but I shopped for clothes for a week ahead of time. And uh, I spoke to, uh, to my mom, and she told How me... How was to... mom? No. Oh, she's all right. <laughs> Henrietta, she told me to be sure and have enough sleep so I didn't look tired. Right. And then my best, my best friend, Judy, in the world, she says to me, your shoes are the most important thing. <laughs> that was her advice to me. And I don't know, I think it's because people cross their legs on the show and you I see suppose. them walk on, and there might be something on the bottom of them. Could or be, something. yeah. <laughs> well, let's, let's let them take a look at the shoes now. Oh, those are, those are very nice. They're like ballet slippers, yeah, nothing on the bottom. <laughs> those are very nice. Thank you. So you did all the preparations. Yeah, I did. I don't know why you should be nervous. I mean, you went out and did that Saturday night live, I mean, week after week after week. And I, right there in front of millions of people? I think it was because um, I was in the persona of a character, you know, glasses, a wig. Yeah. Uh, it helps a lot than coming out as yourself. That's true. I mean, you were my, um, uh, my idol as a, as a, when I was in high school. Yeah. Uh, no, no, this is honest to God truth. That, that far but back, I was huh? Really, I was, <laughs> this was last year that I was in high school. <laughs> And uh, I remember, like, nighttime scary. It yeah. still is. And as long as I knew I could turn on the television set yeah. and you would be there and laughing and talking with people, yeah. it just didn't seem as scary. And then I used to miss you on the weekends. That's nice. uh, So I decided uh, in my life to take care of Saturday night for people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you did it well. You did it well. Absolutely. You, you mentioned... You say hiding in characters is interesting because, as you say, you can get, get lost in the character. Are you basically shy? Yeah, you know, I'm, um, I think I am. I, yeah. I can't count on being funny. I'm yeah. randomly funny. Right. I mean, I never know when it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen exactly that I'll be funny. You know, right. I hope, like, I pray for the muse to come tonight. Yeah, all of a sudden. <laughs> I don't know if he's going to show up. <laughs> but it, it's not, um, I, I'm nervous. I don't like to admit I'm even in show business. Yeah, somebody mentioned that. Yeah, it's like, uh, um, I feel like uh, show business, I'm such a fan, I'm still an audience. And so to admit that I'm in it, like you can travel somewhere, like I've gone to, um, to another city in the United States and I get there and people know me. Right. And I think, did I go to school with them? You know, is it somebody? <laughs> you forget that you're... Yeah, that they've seen me on Have you ever television. done that? I find myself doing that. People come up and say, hi, how are you? And I want to say, gee, where did I meet them? And, I, and, I, and I'm looking for a name or something. And right. of course you've never met them. Right, and you feel embarrassed because you can't yeah. remember them. So don't you reach a point where you say to everybody, oh, yes, yes, yeah. you go, oh, I remember yeah. you, yes, yeah. Because yeah. they see you, and, and it's hard for your whole life to, yeah. to remember every second of your life. Do you still keep in contact with some of your friends you went to school with? Oh, yes, yeah. absolutely. I was just in um, uh, San Francisco, and it turned out I went to an all-girls school. Did you like that? Yeah, it was good. It was good for being funny. You know, there was more. <laughs> uh, Jane Curtin went to an all-girls school as well. And I think because the emphasis was more on, on that instead of dating or whatever, right. it was, um, you know, what if you could crack people up in, in the classroom. You'd get attention. That's right, to get attention. And I, I, yeah, I liked going there. I played field hockey. 
I did, that I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, you had to wear like shin guards on your leg and a little tunic <laughs> and everything. You ever seen girls field hockey? No. Violent sport. Violence. Yes, it's yeah. a violent sport. Okay, we're going to come back. We're going to talk about your book. And uh, you're going to read part of this for us? Yeah, sure. Okay, we'll take a break. We'll be by back. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> Looking at your own stuff, huh? I was reading the book, yeah. Yeah. This is one of your own creations, isn't it? The character, right. Roseanne Rosanna Dana. They say based on kind of a composite of some lady newscasters in New York. Yeah, uh, the name from yeah. Roseanne Scarmadella. Yeah. Yeah. Did it work the very first time out? The yes. character? Uh, well, we did her in a in a scene called Hire the Incompetent, and she worked in a burger joint. <laughs> <laughs> so she was talking about things you find in a burger that you don't know what they are. Yes. Know? And then um, and then. Uh, that's why Belle and I decided to put her on update to work against Jane Curtin because right. there were no loudmouth, gross people on uh, right. the news. <laughs> yeah. Can you do a little of that? Uh, yeah. Um, just... I should say that when um, Roseanne w was uh, asked by the book company to write a book on unemployment, a self-help book with for, to help people who lost their jobs, and instead uh, she told her whole life story. So. The uh, preface of the book is 101 pages long. I noticed long. it's a very long yeah. preface. The actual book's only 14 pages. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so when she tells her life story, it, the reason that she got her job at NBC was because uh, she was working there as a gopher, and uh, they couldn't find the tape that plays the Star Spangled Banner right. to sign off the network at night. And it was an FCC regulation that you have to play that or the whole network is moved to Russia. Right. Right. So um, Roseanne went live on the air and sang the Star Spangled Banner. Because it turned out that day Beverly Sills had borrowed the tape to brush up on the words and right. uh, the music because she was singing Star Spangled Banner at a hockey game hockey that game, night. So. Right. So uh, Roseanne sang and, you know, and the Rockets' red glare part, that Probably high part. The, it was so loud that they say NBC had the highest ratings in six years because people's sets went on that weren't even on. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, after that, she gets this letter in the mail. A Mr. Richard Fader <laughs> from Fort Lee, New Jersey, <laughs> writes in. <laughs> Richard Fader. He writes in and says, Dear Roseanne Rosanna Dana, hey, who are you? How'd you get on TV? Is it hard to get on TV? Can I get on TV? Can you fix my TV? Can you fix the mirror in my medicine cabinet? They both broke when I saw you on TV last night. Which reminds me, last night when you sang that song, you said that we watched Ramparts. Hey, what are Ramparts? That's the only line of the song that you didn't act out. How come? I know what a ram is, and I also know what parts are. So if I put them together, does it mean a ram's parts? A ram's private parts? Oh, I get it. That's why you couldn't act it out on TV. But let me ask you something else then. When all those rockets had a red glare and all those bombs were bursting in there, how come we all just stood around looking at what was underneath a ram? Someone could have gotten killed. Sincerely yours, Richard Fader. P.S. Just in case you feel bad about ruining that song, don't. Earlier last night, I went to a hockey game and Beverly Sills sang that same song and cracked the ice. <laughs> Robert Fader. <laughs> That's a great character. That's a great character. She says all the things, like the emperor's yeah, new clothes. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Yeah. I loved when she got on those gross descriptions of awful things that were going on. You want some gross uh, descriptions? You've got a couple of gross Yeah, things? there's a few in here. Yeah. Well, in the uh, help part of the book, which is the last 14 pages, the actual book, um, <laughs> she wants people to get out of the house and go back and look for work. So the, chapter seven is, get sick of feeling sorry for yourself. Let's face it, you can't sit around the house forever, so you've got to get sick of it. There are a lot of good ways of making yourself sick around the house. One, leave some of your nail clippings on a desk. <laughs> Two, think about how those little pieces of red and brown and gray stuff are in the white sink while you're brushing your teeth. <laughs> Four, leave an orange in a basket by the window for a couple of weeks and watch it grow green fur. <laughs> Stick chewed gum and stuff from your nose under the dining room table and feel around for it later. <laughs> That's not. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. How's it? Is it just out? Now yeah. you've been out of. 
You have been out on a book signing tour, yeah. I understand, around the country? Right. You I, like that? Well, it's pretty interesting. I went to uh, one department store in Los Angeles. Yeah. I won't say which. And uh, nobody showed up. I, w I was at a desk. You're kidding. That was also for sale. The desk was for sale. I had a price tag on it. And you had the books all piled and up the ready? the books were piled up. There were like hundreds of books. And people were going by and like picking up the book and looking through it and putting it back on the pile oh. while I'm sitting there. And I said to this one lady, because I'm a saleswoman at heart, I said, to, hey, buy the book. And she went, no. <laughs> <laughs> so then the next week I went to Los Cerritos Center. Yeah. And uh, there were six armed guards waiting to take me in. It was like being a little beetle. Yeah. You know, I walked in there, they had wine and cheese, and there were hundreds of people there, and I, I said I had to go to the bathroom, and two guards took me to the bathroom wow. and waited outside, and when I was inside, I had to wait in line, though, for the bathroom. You're kidding. <laughs> they couldn't come in and get me through, and that went great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I waited. But um, that, that went wonderfully, yeah. and people, people were there, because they knew about it, and they brought me gifts and, and nice. presents in the line. It was yeah. great. Authorist now, huh? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Walter Cronkite is here tonight. And Karen Akers.